This video is part of my Valerian Steel series. I'll list the other Valerian Sword videos I've done at the end of this video. This video is about the ancestral sword of House Stark, Ice. But before going into the sword we read about in the beginning of the series, it's important to note that the ice we see at the beginning of the first book isn't the first ancestral sword named Ice that belonged to the Starks. Their modern sword was named after their ancestral sword that dated back to the Age of Heroes, when the Starks were kings in the north. There's a lot of fan speculation on how they got, and then what happened to, their original sword. The thoughts range from likely to very… Mm, unlikely. Some believe their original sword was a weapon of the Others taken as a trophy from the conquest when they pushed the Others back beyond the wall. The Others' weapons we've encountered have been described as looking alive, translucent, with a shard of crystal so thin that it seemed to almost vanish when seen edge on. George has mentioned that while the Others' swords are made from ice, it isn't like regular old ice, and that the Others can do things with ice that we can't imagine, and make substances of it. Fans that believe this theory argue that it would make sense if the Starks defeated the Others, took one of their swords, and then named it Ice, as their blades look like ice. A very original name. Other fans believe that their original sword was a weapon of the Others given during peace negotiations between the Others and the Starks. Another theory is that the first Ice was Bran the Builders, the founder of House Stark's sword. A safer theory is the original Ice was simply a bronze sword brought over by the First Men. However the original Ice came to the Starks, and whatever their first sword was made of, it was eventually lost or replaced. We aren't given any clues to the how, it may have been lost in battle, taken by an enemy, or simply became old and just needed to be replaced. Maybe the new Ice we read about in A Game of Thrones was an upgrade from their old ancestral sword. Nothing beats Valerian Steel. There's also speculation that there were many swords named Ice throughout House Stark's ruling of the North. Whether needing to be replaced over time from being taken, normal wear and tear becoming too old, stolen, etc. Until eventually they bought or were given the Valerian Steel Sword that no longer needed to be replaced. With all that being said, now let's talk about the modern ice that we meet in the beginning of the series. The latest ancestral sword of House Stark was made of Valerian Steel, stronger, lighter, and sharper than normal steel, and it held an edge much better than normal steel as well. Ice was created in Valeria, before the Doom, only 400 years before the beginning of the series. Forged with spells and by folding the metal back on itself hundreds of times, the steel has a rippling look to it and was as sharp as the day it was forged. The sword was as wide across as a man's hand, dark as smoke, and taller than an adolescent Rob Stark. And I want to make a side note that there has been some tinfoil, and I say that very lovingly, going on whether the sword is actually 400 years old. It's stated King Torrin Stark, the king who knelt, surrendered his sword during Aegon's conquest to Aegon about 300-ish years before the beginning of the books. When Catelyn says that the sword is 400 years old, she could have been guessing at the age, or King Torrin may not have used their ancestral sword ice during the conquest. You might not want to bring your family heirloom to a battle. Which actually brings up a question I've seen asked a lot. Was ice used in battle? When George was asked if Ned ever used ice in battle, he replied, It was probably too heavy and clumsy to use in battle unless you're the mountain. He also stated that it was a great sword, large and cumbersome, and a ceremonial sword for beheading people more than a fighting sword. Elio has pointed out his response doesn't make sense. She said, I admit, I was tempted to point out that it was Valerian steel, not regular steel. So why would the weight matter so much in this case? In particular, when the likes of Randall Tarly and Arthur Dane are clearly said to have used their own Valerian, Valerian-like swords in battle. Tarly is not described as particularly powerful. In fact, he's called lean, doubtless strong and fit, but still lean. So I take this as a firm no. Ned never used it in battle but I think George's off-the-cuff explanations doesn't quite fit the facts. Still, some argue with her statement believing the dimensions of the sword could have made it unwieldy, and then usually a, a big fight about swords begins. George's words are questioned a bit more when in A Game of Thrones Complete History and Lore Part 2, it is said that Ned used ice during the Greyjoy Rebellion. Though I tend not to include any lore or history presented by HBO as canon unless it is backed up by the books or George himself. The Game of Thrones lore video scripts are not written by George and have had errors in them in the past. 
Also, George made this comment about Ned not using the sword in battle in 2015, and the lore video was made in 2013. But George has admitted he has to be reminded about facts in his world, so slipping up during an interview wouldn't be out of the realm of possibilities. There's been some discussion based off of his answer whether Ned's older brother, Brandon, was trained to fight with a sword, and when Ned received the sword after his father and brother died, he simply wasn't comfortable enough to use it. George has made it clear that Brandon was the real swordsman in the family. But George did phrase his answer in a way that made it sound like it was too cumbersome for anyone to wield it. But that doesn't mean that some Starks couldn't have been trained to use it. We just don't know. If Torn did use it during battle, some believe that Aegon could have given him the sword back or given him a new one for good behavior. And then again, Catelyn's 400 year statement was a bit off. We've seen plenty of time estimation by characters being wrong in the books. But honestly, I would guess that Torn didn't bring it to battle Aegon's army. But of course, I can't say that for certain. As well, the pre-Valyrian ice may have been used in battle, but that's another guess. So a lot of us are still waiting to get more information from George and see if his statement was a slip up or not the complete story. Kind of like the rarity of Valyrian steel. But I will say, if Ned didn't use the sword ice in battle, it makes his fight with Arthur Dane at the Tower of Joy even more impressive. Lastly, ice during the novels. This, of course, is major book spoilers. In A Game of Thrones, we read that Ned Stark uses ice to execute those he condemns. After performing an execution, Ned would go to the God's Wood in Winterfell, sit beneath the weirwood tree, and clean the blade in the black water and with a swatch of oiled leather. When Robert Baratheon makes Ned his new hand, Ned takes ice with him to King's Landing. He likely brought it with him in case he had to condemn anyone to death, as he would still want to perform the execution himself. He also may have felt it made sense to bring a ceremonial sword of his house to King's Landing during his time as Hand of the King, such as to wear it during formal occasions. On the way to King's Landing, when Robert sentences Sansa's direwolf lady to death, Ned executes the animal with ice, saying, She is of the North. She deserves better than a butcher. Later, at Ned's execution, Sir Illyn Payne used ice to decapitate Ned at the Great Sep of Baelor. Payne would continue carrying the blade after Ned's death. In Clash of Kings during the War of the Five Kings, Robb Stark would send a peace offer, which included being given his father's sword back. Tyrion offered to give the sword back when Robb made peace and not before. Ice was still with Payne during the Battle of the Blackwater, where he remained with Cersei Lannister and Sansa Stark in the Queen's Ballroom of the Red Keep in case Stannis was victorious. In the next book, Tywin Lannister takes the sword from Payne and has ice melted down and reforged. As the sword was so large, there was enough metal to make two long swords, one for his son Jaime and the other for his grandson Joffrey, something Tyrion disapproves of, wishing he had sent the sword back to Robb Stark. As of the last book, A Dance with Dragons, Joffrey's sword is with Tommen, and Jaime gave his sword to Brienne of Tarth, sending her to find Sansa Stark and telling her, you'll be defending Ned Stark's daughter with Ned Stark's own steel, if that makes any difference to you. When Brienne encounters Lady Stoneheart, the sword is taken away. However, she was given the sword back. And that is the jumbled information we have about ice. Thanks for watching, thumbs up are appreciated, it helps the video and channel. Later this week is a Patreon requested theory video.